Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nerd Out, Pride.com series where we talk about queer, geeky news. Um, today, I am with Julia Kay, who is the creator of Up and Out, um, and it's Up and Out's first collection, Super Late Bloomer, which is an adorable webcomic series about Julia herself, about her transition. And thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. You were writing Up and Out um, before you came out as transgender. What made you decide to take Up and Out from more gag focus to more about your transition, be more autobiographical? I was doing uh, absurdist gag humor for like the past four years prior and had made a name for myself and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, but while I was going through the whole gender transition process, like the early, early stages of it, um, I found it to be pretty overwhelming mm -hmm. and I didn't know any trans people at all to mm -hmm. vent to, to talk to. So it became necessary for me to find a method of expression that allowed me to just be completely honest with my emotions and just process everything that I was going through on a daily basis. It was at that point that I started just making journal comics for myself. It was never my intent to really share them with mm -hmm. the world, which I think allowed me to be more honest than I would have otherwise. I got hired by Disney um, oh. to work on Big City Greens and my ability to create gag strips kind of fell by the wayside. I didn't really have the mental capacity to keep on gotcha. making uh, humor strips on the side during that period. I noticed that I had like a stack of like 200 comics here. I'm like, well, <sighs> all right, here we go. <laughs> my, I mean, my hope was to reach other trans people and provide a source of content that I found to not really exist on the internet. Um, like easily digestible trans related comics. That's one of the things that I found really interesting about the collection as a whole is it documents a lot of these like small incremental moments that a lot of people don't even think about and that I had I relate to so hard but I'd literally forgotten because mm -hmm. now I'm like so far beyond that I'm like oh yeah I forgot that like how much a pain in the butt it was to like change all my name on my accounts and things like that there's so little that's understood by the society at large about the trans experience I mean I don't know it's just an interesting microcosm of like just events like you're just inundated with like needing to I don't know take control of your life for the first time and mm -hmm. From the outside in, like, it's really difficult to understand just how much is happening all at once. Mm -hmm. We need more information out there yeah. about the trans experience to help create a, a sense of empathy and understanding for the trans community at large. So you talked about how you would do these comics as sort of like your own personal like journal. Mm -hmm. What was that process like and why did you want to do it? in a comic form? Well, I would sit at the computer every day making comics, um, absurdist humor strips for the internet. A few months into my transition, I realized that like, I needed to break away from that to start processing um, my feelings and try to mentally navigate the experience of living as a trans person in our society. And so I would just set aside like a good hour at the end of the day to just kind of think and question how am I feeling about this? Mm -hmm. What actually happened today? Um, to just kind of, to try and make sense of the chaos that my life had become. The most difficult part early on was trying to whittle that down to just one thing mm -hmm. because it felt like there were so many important things that I wanted to capture. But I knew that if I did any more than like say three panels, like the amount of information that could fit into a three panel comic, like. I would have become overwhelmed by the project and I would have stopped doing it really quickly. Mm -hmm. I really liked that it was kind of very small and condensed in, in that three panel style because it just reminded me of staying up late at night and like reading Calvin and Hobbes. Oh yeah. I devoured newspaper strips growing mm -hmm. up like so many others around my age. Um, and yeah, they've always just been really close to my heart and like the format made sense and Having made gag strips for like the past few years, um, I was starting to actually get tired of doing um, punchlines at the end, and mm -hmm. it just felt super freeing and incredible to not to just leave on an emotional beat. One of the things that I really, really related to, and one of the most important strips for me in the whole collection, was the last one, 
where you talk about how a lot of things you're facing now just feel like general women's issues mm -hmm. as opposed to like big trans things. Sure. Um, so what made you come to that realization and how did it feel? I started feeling just weird like writing. I felt like I was like just being really repetitive mm -hmm. and it was just going through the, the motions of doing the project. Like sure, I would get misgendered, but it wasn't like world crushing at that point. It just became a lot easier to, I don't know, see myself as a woman, like having had experiences living as a woman, being treated as a woman in society. I don't know, that loomed larger in my day-to-day -day experience than just specifically being trans. Yeah, that's something that I've been, myself personally, also dealing with too, because it's this weird thing of being really happy about that, being like, look, I'm, I'm living the life that like, I always wanted. But then also like this kind of sadness, because there was so much, you know, I like remember the first time I wore women's clothes, and there was just such like euphoria around yeah. that. And now it's just sort of like my everyday. And I still like take moments to recognize that, but it's also mm -hmm. just strange that it just feels so natural. I mean, how do, how do you feel like where you're at with being transgender today? Occasionally, like I'll actually mentally recognize just how far I've come. And, mm -hmm. like. I'll just be doing my makeup in the morning and be like, this rules. This is, this is awesome. This is just my daily life now. This mm -hmm. is, there's something magical to me about how mundane the entire experience has become. Mm -hmm. Being trans is such an important part of my identity. And I just trying to figure out where, where it is mm -hmm. in my life now. Yeah. Because it's not part of that like, oh my gosh, dysphoria, oh my gosh, you know, what's the next transition step? Sure, I mean, it's interesting having come out with this collection because while I've certainly moved past everything that's captured there, at the same time, like, I, like, through posting online and talking about, like, the experiences still regularly today, like, like part of me is still, like, in that, in that era, which I kind of appreciate. Um, there are so many trans people out there just like they're just starting to figure themselves out mm -hmm. and it's just super helpful to like hear from somebody that's been there. And After the last comic you end the book with a letter to your younger self. Mm -hmm. So why did you want to end the, the book there? This entire book was me just working through emotions and processing things while being trans and so I felt the need to I don't know, address an earlier period in my life that often goes unexamined by myself even yeah. because it can be difficult to, be, to look back to yeah. that period. What's something that you wish that cisgender people would know more about a trans experience? Everything. Everything honestly. Yeah. Like I just want like the cis population as a whole to just read more and like see more works created by trans people mm -hmm. and like to educate themselves on just any little bit they can to see past the stereotypes and myths that seem to have taken our, I don't know, taken the collective imagination of our society that can become such a mundane experience mm -hmm. like for just people living our lives. That's why I absolutely adore this book is you talk about the mundanity. You have mm -hmm. to still live a day-to-day -day life within all that. Yeah. And I, that's why I just absolutely adore this whole collection because it just reminds me of all of that and like both the sadness and joys of that. Mm -hmm. So I like thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. I really, it honestly, it meant a lot to me. Thank you so much. It was really great talking to you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for inviting me. Of course.